Thank you. You really made my life sound more exciting than it really is. Thank you so much for sharing your Saturday afternoon with me. Oh, I'm supposed to stay here. Uh, I see familiar faces in the audience. I'm thrilled to see you here. Uh, still, for, for those of you whom I don't have the pleasure to know yet, my name is Radost, and uh, I work on some of the partnerships of SiteGround. SiteGround is an international hosting company. Up to date, uh, our team is almost 500 people, and we're very happy to be the home of about 1,800,000 domains. So we're large, right? But large is also a matter of perspective. I recently read that uh, Walmart had employees 2,300,000 in 2017. Imagine that, entire Sofia city works for Walmart. So, because we know that large is a matter of perspective, uh, at SiteGround we're constantly in pursuit of uh, new partnership, partnerships, because establishing partnerships is a great way for a company of any size to grow bigger than where it is right now. Maybe except Walmart, but we're not here to talk about it today. Uh, from all partnerships that you could establish, uh, those with uh, larger than yours organizations are the most beneficial ones because they allow you to expand your customer reach at once, uh, to, so to speak, jump out of yourself, uh, to increase um, your sales significantly and respectively to win more. In my job at SiteGround, this is exactly what I do. I develop uh, relationships with big companies from which I want something, and uh, subsequently, I work with smaller companies that also want something from me. And it sounds great, and it's very beneficial, and we're gonna win big, except it's kind of a problem because this often is very tricky. The process of establishing partnerships with larger organizations uh, has a difficult start. It is slow, it is lengthy. Honestly, it is frequently very annoying. And the worst of all is that you don't, you're uncertain of its outcome until the very end, meaning until uh, you sign the contract. Uh, but uh, practice shows that uh, there are some uh, steps that you can undertake in order to make this process successful. So I'll spend the next minutes uh, sharing those with you. Oh, okay. As frequently in life and always in business, in order to be successful, you gotta prepare. The first and most important thing uh, you need to do when you are about to establish a partnership with a larger organization is to define the business purpose of that partnership. Luckily, that's easy because that business purpose always needs to lead to, the, to achieving the business goal of your organization, which I'm sure you know from the very beginning. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't necessarily, uh, it doesn't mean necessarily that the business goal of your partnership uh, needs to directly lead to the business goal of your organization, meaning uh, all companies want to sell, I'm not gonna establish partnership that will uh, create sales. No, that's, that's not the rule. You could have a partnership that takes strategic curves to getting to the business goal of your organization. For example, partner with someone who will create brand awareness for you, which will eventually lead to more sales. But ultimately, when you start working on a partnership, you need to have a clear vision of how its business goal will lead to uh, achieving the business goal of your uh, organization. Uh, once you have your business goal validated, you need to identify a business partner who will help you get there. When I first joined SignGround, uh, one of the projects I started working on uh, was developing a partnership uh, with WeWork. I don't know if you're familiar with this organization, uh, but it's uh, one of the largest and certainly the fastest growing uh, co-working space companies in the world. Uh, their customers are startups and entrepreneurs. And these are my customers, SiteGround's customers, because these are people that are at the level of uh, development of their business 
Uh, now is the time when they think about their websites, so now is the time when they need hosting, and I want them to buy hosting from me. So, uh, I started working on developing the relationship with WeWork exactly, not any other co-working space, because this is also where people go, because there are other co-working spaces, but my research showed that they attract mature companies, remote workers, in other words, people who don't really care about hosting right now, and I can't sell them. This is how the business, uh, I got my business purpose, and I identified the exact partner who will get me there to achieve it. When you know what you want, and when you know who can help you get it, you're ready to develop your partnership concept. A partnership concept needs to be specific. A partnership concept is not, wow, such a cool company, let's do something with them. No. Your partnership concept needs to answer these two questions. What will I do for my partner? And what I want my partner to do for me? And in order to uh, answer these questions, you need to do a lot of research work on your partner. Uh, to go back to my work experience, uh, when I identified that we have overlapping customer bases with them, I visited all of their 12 websites or so, and I was looking for the exact space where I want to see SiteGround's product placed within their community, within their network, within their websites. So when I was about to approach them, I was absolutely ready with what exactly I want from them. So careful research will lead you to creating a successful partnership concept. How to approach the partner? Okay. Obviously, uh, when you're talking about a large company, you can't, go, you, you can't talk to the entire company at once. You need to identify who's the right person that uh, you can talk to. I know WordPress pros are on Twitter, but in fact, uh, the platform that you need in this case is LinkedIn, and of course, the company website. LinkedIn uh, provides valuable information about companies, employees, there are relationships between them and their relationships, their relations with other companies. Do not shoe for the CEO. Never. In fact, I would say do not shoe for any on C level position. Uh, unlike smaller companies, uh, when sometimes uh, the CEO is the one involved in all decisions, in large organizations there are uh, layers, there are filters, and very often. Um, Important decisions are taken by mid-level management or even regular employees. The scenario under which the CEO of a large organization will receive an email from someone unknown, for example, will read it and rush to their partnerships manager with the order, do it now, is absolutely unrealistic. So it will uh, only create more work for you and you'll have to wait longer. Uh, the people who you're looking for usually uh, have the words partnerships, business development, account, regional account in their titles. But as you know, uh, nowadays we have very funky business titles um, you know, for our job. So I'd recommend that you not only just know the title, but you also read through the resume that's published on LinkedIn so that you're sure that this person is the right one for you. You have found your person. You're going to make contact. It's wonderful that um, I'm talking about, it, about this here at WordCamp because WordCamp, uh, WordCamps are one of the events that really present great opportunities for uh, creating partnerships if you prepare for that. Meaning that before you come to WordCamp hoping to find the partner who will help you grow your business, you need to research who else is coming. WordCamp organizers are such cool people and they do have the work for you. You have publicly available information on sponsors. Is my kid here after all? <laughs> you have uh, publicly available information on sponsors, on speakers, on regular employees. So before you go to WordCamp, check who is coming, check their websites, you know, mark your targets, and then come and simply go talk to them. I'll share again about my work experience. I started talking to them at a certain moment, the things honestly got stuck. 
and I wasn't getting the answers that I was expecting. But luckily, there was an event right here in Sofia with one uh, of their you know, mid-level mid managers speaking at that event. So I bought a ticket for Digital K, and I went there with the sole purpose of get this person, of meet this person uh, in the hallway, and ask him to help me with my problem with his colleagues from WeWork. He wasn't even part of the team working with me, nothing like that. But I went over there, I just talked to him, it turned out that we had friends in common, so after that, he came back to, he went back to London, he called his colleagues, and they started cooperating with me, and my problems were solved. So that's an excellent, excellent way to not only start a partnership, but also to maintain it. Just use it wisely. Obviously, it's um, super cool if you can get a referral. Online stalking is a definitely underestimated process, according to me. Online being the focus here, right? So, when you identify someone via LinkedIn, just Google them or Facebook them and see if they have hobbies maybe like yours, if they have a side business that you know, if uh, they, obviously, if you have common acquaintances and all that. Anything would help uh, for you to get to that person easier. Email would be the most professional way to approach someone. Unfortunately, we don't always have it. LinkedIn message is another option. Just keep in mind that you have to wait usually even longer uh, for a person to respond because people don't necessarily go check their LinkedIn every day. Finally, general contact form. Larger organizations usually, not usually, always have someone minding taking care of the general contact form. And now, usually, this person will be responsible enough to get your message to the right person in the organization. Whether it's going to be answered or no, it's a totally different story. Don't expect that you will receive a response from the first time. This is okay, you should not get discouraged by this. Um, in reality, people, for example, with cold emails, people tend to respond to them after two or three uh, attempts. So just create an algorithm for yourself that you need to follow in order to make initial contact, do it again, remind you of yourself again, and so forth. Just be careful, because the saying goes that a common definition of insanity, and to this how that stupidity too, is repeating the same action again and again and again and every time expecting to achieve to a different result. It doesn't work that way. My personal borderline for stupidity is three. Three times I attempt to contact someone via one and the same channel and I stop and I change my strategy. So uh, I'd say define your personal borderline for stupidity and follow your algorithm, and when you hit it, you just change your approach, some, try something else. When approaching, the truth is that you have to do the work. No one will come to you. No one waits around with their door opens. You just need to act proactively. We mentioned uh, several ways to make a contact with someone. Uh, usually, you will be uh, making your partnership proposal via writing. This is, um, I think, a very sensitive, sensitive uh, moment of establishing a partnership with larger organizations. So, um, I have several tips from you, from my personal practice, on how to make this proposal more successful. Keep it short. I will take the time to get to the slides in my notes until you read the slide. <laughs> you don't need more than three paragraphs. This includes hellos and goodbyes. Keep it short. The, uh, the length of your message uh, is an important indicator uh, for your level of preparation for this partnership. If you are incapable of telling me what you want in a couple of sentences, all I'm thinking is that you're not really capable of uh, you don't really know what you want at all. In which case, and this is bad for you too, in which case I suggest you go back, define your business goal, define your business purpose, and then start the game. Do not use professional jargon. Uh, there are two, uh, in 
there are, there are two problems that you could create with that. First of all, people may not really understand you, or even worse, they may understand something totally different than what you're trying to tell them. For example, uh, here, if I say SMBs, uh, all you will understand is small, medium uh, businesses, right? But if you check Wikipedia, Wikipedia offers 13 different meanings for that acronym. So you don't know, uh, the person across of you is not necessarily well acquainted with your field of work. They may be in a totally different industry. You don't know what they will understand. So just make sure that you don't use any jargon to confuse them. In general, just mind the tone of your message. Do not make extreme comparisons. The best, the only, the first, uh, the most sellable, the most useful, this does not really work well, especially when you approach someone uh, for the first time. What is good to do, however, if there is uh, to compare yourself to a more established competitor of yours. This serves two purposes. First of all, if the partner is not well aware of your field of work, which is pretty regular situation, you give them clarity of what you do and you give them easy clarity of what you do. How many of you know what send in blue is? Put your hands down, please. <laughs> okay, three people. How many of you know what MailChimp is? There you go. Send in blue, according to their own words, is the same as MailChimp, but cheaper. I'm not going to discuss Send in Blue now, I haven't checked this for myself, but I'm just saying that when they approached me, this is what they told me. I don't know what Send in Blue is, they just said, we're MailChimp but cheaper. And then I was like, okay, so let's see what this, you know, cheaper too goes on doing. I didn't have to go on their website to research them, to check them and all that. So that's easy. Second thing, it's super helpful if your partner already works uh, with your more established competitor. Because it, this means that uh, your partner is open for the proposal you're about to make. And this makes they're open for this type of, type of relationship. And in this case, this makes your life easier. Avoid fancy language. I'm not, I'm not going to explain you why to avoid a face, fancy language. I'll just show you this. This is an actual uh, partnership proposal that I received, uh, I think, a couple of months ago. So let's read it together. My name is Ivan, and I'm the co-founder of XYZ Company. So far, so good. We provide multifunctional solutions, servicing enterprise-level customers, and bigger installations. I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Maybe some of you did, but honestly, I didn't. But I you know, keep on reading. Maybe it will get clearer. As the technology continued to mature, and as we were able to recognize the value from the larger businesses, I need to take a breath here, and how that could apply to SMBs and their content marketing, whatever, 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 it just a no. I still don't get it. I read it three times. I don't understand it. You got to understand how the larger uh, partner thinks here. Nobody has time for yet another email. You yourself, you don't have time for yet another email. That's perfectly normal. What you need to offer in the beginning when you approach them is um, clear, um, clear vision and clear statement how your larger partner is about to gain quick returns from working with you. So you don't need to uh, write all these fancy schmancy words. What you can do is simply this. Introduce yourself. And then attract their attention. A number of my clients already use site plan services, and I think this can be extended. You attract my attention, because people pay attention when you talk about them, always. No one will see your, himself, themselves, no one see themselves in the first sentence of your email, your writing proposals, and look away. Never. Everybody will keep attention. This simple sentence, the second one, uh, achieves two other goals, too. First of all, you already told me that we have overlapping clients, which for me is great. You know, for me, this means also, for me, this means more sales. And the, the second thing you told me with this sentence is that you have a plan how we can make even more sales together, even more clients. I love people with a plan. 
if I work with someone with a plan, it means that I don't have to do the plan myself. So I definitely read forward. Get to the point, exactly. Just say exactly what you expect uh, the bigger partner to do and what you gonna uh, offer for them. That's really bad. I'm sorry that you showed me after five minutes. Okay, so I'll have to run forward. <laughs> so get to the point. Tell them what you, what you expect. Uh, tell them what you offer, tell them what you expect. Keep it specific. Here all you need to do is numbers and successful examples. Uh, successful examples. If you have successful examples with their competitors, uh, that is even better for you. All you have to do with your uh, first uh, partnership proposal to someone is to demonstrate what the partner has to win out of that relationship. I wish I could tell you that once you have written your email, you have it read and answered and it's all done, but it's not. And there will be negotiations and once again, you could easily come out alive with them and winning if you prepare on them. Stay flexible. Most of the cases, a larger partner will always try to squeeze you in. They will not take your initial proposal. This shouldn't discourage you. You just get prepared for that. For example, uh, if on your web website it says that you're giving 30% discount for resellers, but in reality you're prepared to give 50% discount for a bulk reseller, you don't have to approach your larger partner just uh, you know, offering the 50% at once. If it's important for them, they will ask for it, for sure. And after that, you will give it to them, but then you have the opportunity to ask for something else for you in return and to gain more of that negotiation power. It is not personal. We all love what we do, and this is especially valid in the WordPress community. It is only human nature uh, to get upset and to uh, have our our <coughs> sorry, reasonable thinking blurred when we get mad at someone if we feel that they don't appreciate our product, they don't value our service high enough. Don't do that. Keep emotions out. If you don't get the answers that you want to get at a certain level of uh, developing the partnership, just ignore that, try a different pr approach, keep, keep yourself focused, and you know, just move forward. It's not, nothing is personal. I know that I just told you that it's not personal, but still, you have to work with personalities there, because you have a contact person. That contact person is, your, is the gatekeeper to your partnering with that large organization. It is, because there, it's a large organization, usually that contact person does not have the power to uh, make your deal happen individually, but trust me, most of the cases, they have the power to kill your deal, individually. So, be nice to people. Never act condescending. If somebody, again, doesn't give you the answers uh, that you want, don't go on telling them, I want to talk to your manager. It doesn't work like that. Uh, keep in mind that you're working uh, with a personality um, across of you, and you always need to mind their ego. Plus, after that, when you actually start working, when you actually start uh, working with this company, if, if you have been nice to this person, you will have an ambassador within this larger organization, and it's also, it's super helpful for you. Uh, the successful process of developing partnerships with larger organizations depends on the persistence, the positive attitude, and the flexibility of the smaller party. This is the fact. And that's okay. It does not mean, however, that if now you're in the position of the smaller party, you need to give anything that the larger organization wants. Not, never. You should never do that. Starting a partnership, starting uh, getting into the negotiations, thinking about signing the contract, you always have to know where to draw the line. And this line stands right before you lose perspective on your, on your business goal. Uh, if something in a partnership uh, does not satisfy you, if it makes you compromise your values, if it makes you sacrifice your business goal while you started in the first place, you just say no. I'll finish with a cliche. The world is big and salvation lurks around the corner. There are no irreplaceable people in business and certainly 
their normal irreplaceable partners. As you know, I'm not on Twitter, but please feel free to send me an email, and if it's short and clear, I'll be happy to respond. Thank you. in Bulgarian if uh, that would be more comfortable. Uh, 
А, като, като гречно, да, окей, okay, даже а, се изисква. Аз много се надявам, че това не беше препаратка към факта, че аз говорех на английски, но мисля, че е все пак какво е услуга залата. Да, а, даже не само окей, okay, ами задължително е да е на български. А, целта на първото съобщение е да стопли контакта. Ако ти си българин и от среща партньорът ти е българин, да му напишеш на английски, може да предизвика само единствено според мен смесени емоции. Всичко, което ви приближава и ви прави по-близки, съответно, е окей okay и задължително препоръчно. Може ли аз да питам нещо? Разбира се. Интересуваме от вашия опит кой е най-добрия метод за получаване на нови клиенти, като си има предвид, а, че се апрочват като колко лица. Примерно имейл или някакъв друг вариант. А, в случая за получаване на нови клиенти или за създаване на партньори? А... И, нека да кажем първо за клиенти, после за партньорство. Ами, аз обаче искам да го обърна. Защото ти създаваш партньорства, които... Целта на партньорствата е те да ти донесат много нови клиенти след това. Тоест, ако мейла, който продава индивидуален продукт до конкретен клиент, да му кажа, че е отворил нов магазин, продаваш в софтуер, това е различна баница, да е наречен. В случая ти се опитваш да се свържиш с хора, които ще ти донесат много нови клиенти наведнъж. И от а, тези методи, които аз посочих, а, от пете, аз бих казала всичките наведнъж, ако може. Както казах, най-добре е да отидеш и да кажеш на човека какво искаш. Ако имате общи познати, бизнес или лични общи познати, ги помоли и те да му кажат ти какво искаш. А, изпрати му имейл. А, говори с колеги, ако можеш да ги намериш по някакъв начин. По, по всякакъв начин е окей okay да се свързваш с някого, докато разбира се, като разбира се имаш една граница, която е, както казах, няколко пъти, за да не си губиш ти времето и да не нарушаваш добрия тон все пак, за да не ставаш досаден. Да, мисли. А, но става въпрос, примерно, а, ако става въпрос за изпращане на съобщение по имейл, mm-hmm. проблема е, че а, няма как да, да се избегне примерно един малък процент, който винаги от срещата страна не е доволна с това нещо. Мисля, че не иска да се свързват с тях. А, и ами... аз първо се спрашвам много имейли и имам около, да кажем, 2%. Не се винаги на псува, да така да се окаже. <laughs> Няма как да се сбърна. Опасявам се, че това е, защото а, вие в момента дефинирате ситуация, в която изпращате мас мейли на много клиенти и те ги третират като спам. А в случая с гаражното на партньорства, хората, с които вие бихте се свързали, това има работата. Те, няма, те не третират имейлите за партньорства като спам. Тяхната работа е да оценят това партньорство, дали ще е добре за тяхната организация или не, но не го, а, но не, не го трият автоматично и да си, да си отидат по пътя и, не, и в никакъв случай не мислят нищо лошо а, за човека, който го изпраща. Аз да показах преди малко този абсурден дълъг имейл. Аз съм чела дори него, дори тяхната организация съм поручила в крайна сметка. Така че хората, защо се казват партньорства, хората, които получават имейли, това е магазинът, те няма да те псуват. 